day one of the mini cut. I've been gaining now for just over nine months, 30, 34 weeks. It's quite interesting that my contest prep last year was 34 weeks and my first push up this year was 34 weeks. As usual, we're gonna take some photos. We're gonna just show my physique currently right now, day one, and then obviously we can make some comparisons throughout. It's just annoying that this fucking sun is right in my way where I normally would pose. Quite interesting to see that when you gain weight, you look worse. And when I look leaner, I look way better. And that's the bodybuilding for you. That's the illusion of bodybuilding. You have to get smaller to look better. If you're sitting there, you know, you're heaviest in your off season, it will fucking reward. It will reward because no cunt ever wants to fucking push their body weight. They just want to ponce about sitting like a fucking child being 150 pounds for the rest of their life. You don't want to be that. You want to be the biggest, the best version of yourself. And unfortunately you have to push boundaries which you've never been to in terms of scale weight in order for you to get a better look physique like I promise you when I diet back down I won't be that 144 145 skinny little rat I'll be that 150 pound five pounds of muscle <laughs> Additional top ups, as I mentioned in my previous video, We've got the MTS Whey, best tasting protein ever, in my opinion. Macros are shit, so if you're dieting, you don't want these macros per serving. 3.5 grams of fat, 6 grams of carbs, 25 grams of protein. Not too bad, but they're not the greatest. When you mix it in your oats, it's like a cake texture. It's unbelievable. Got cookies and cream this time. I normally would get peanut butter and cookies and cream, but they didn't have that in stock. So cookies and cream, gonna give this one a, uh, a go. I've heard some really good things about that. I've heard good things about red velvet as well. I don't know about you guys, but I'm very picky when it comes to my protein. If I if I, I don't want to try something new because I don't know whether I'm gonna like it, I don't I don't I don't want to waste it. Non-stims, I use some non-stims here and there. We've got the Naughty Boy Sick Pump non-stim, so I'm excited to give this one a go. It's got six grams of L-citrulline, uh, beta aline, 2.5 grams, uh, glycosize, four milligrams, more four milligrams. I don't know any of that stuff, but I know the main stuff is citrulline and beta aline or what aline, whatever you want. I don't know what you call them. Recover EAs again. One of the best tasting EAAs. Nothing worse than having a shit tasting flavor of EAA. So gone for the Oh My God or OMG flavor this time around, which I don't know what that is. It looks like orange, pineapple, kiwi, a fuck knows. That's what it is there. And then obviously got some two samples of nuts and more. I mean, I don't, I probably won't use these, but um, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I won't probably won't use them because I'm dieting now and I don't want to waste my calories on little peanut butter things, nut butter. So day one of the mini cut, I'm out for my first walk of the day. We've got 10K steps on a train day, and we'll split that up in five, two 5K walks pretty much. Going food shopping as well, whilst I'm at it. So I'll link the video, which I'm gonna upload about my food shop. So I'm gonna show you all the foods that I'm just gonna eat throughout this dieting phase. Everything that you need to know about mini cut, I'm going to tell you right now. So, in my opinion, mini cut should last about four to six weeks, maybe seven, eight weeks max. No more than that. Then it just turns into a dieting phase, and you don't want to do that. So, what we're trying to do is just get in, get out. You want to get this done over, and you want to start gaining again as soon as you possibly can. Get in a better body composition, lose a little bit of body fat, resensitize yourself to a surplus, and then push on beyond where I was previously. That's all I'm simply doing here. So, roughly looking to take off about 10 to 15 grams, 10 to 15 grams 10 to 15 pounds in body weight over that period very realistic dropping calories down as much as what i need so for example my nutrition for my mini cut was 
250 protein, 100 grams of fat on a training day, 450 gram of carbs. And then my non-trained day was the same protein, 250, 300 grams of carbs and 100 grams of fat. Now my new mini cut macros are gonna be 250 protein, so protein always stays static, 300 gram of carbs on a train day, 40 grams of fat. So a big hefty drop of 60 grams of fat on a train day. And then same protein again, 250, 250 carbs, 60 grams of fat. So again, a big hefty drop in fat there. Goal is just get as, I, I don't mind getting low because eventually I, you know, I'm not dieting for a long time. If I need to go down low for the next couple of weeks, then I 100% will. I've got no problem with doing that because my appetite's fairly okay. You know, my, I'm not crazy, crazy hungry. Not like I was on prep. It's just getting in, getting out. So I would initially drop about 1,000 calories off your actual calorie intake for the week and I know a lot of people are a little bit worried about oh my god dropping that much calories what should I oh my god am I gonna lose all my muscle and you're not gonna lose muscle in four to six weeks no way especially if you're still continuing to train you're definitely not gonna be doing it and the reason why I'm doing this like I said is just to get myself in a better position as when the gym's open hopefully on the 4th of July I'll be in a situation where I can go back into the gym and I can make some really good initial progress whilst going back to the gym because I'm gonna be sensitive to surplus sensitive to food I'm gonna get good pumps I'm gonna feel really really good so that is kind of the goal which we're trying to do there steps wise we're trying to hit 10,000 steps on a train day non-train days 12,500 I believe so just 2,500 increase zero cardio not doing any cardio at all right now that is it get in get out reverse out and then obviously start gaining again like I see a lot of people post mini cut pissing around dieting and staying lean and it's just wasting away progress wasting away progress so yeah those are my macros those that's everything that you need to know uh, of course i know i'm going to get a few other questions so if you do have questions drop them down below and i'll go for it throughout a video or something like that got a new product to try the superhuman greens anabolic apple granny smith apple from Alpha Lung. Don't often use green powders as I get most of my five a day in each day, believe it or not. As I'm mini cutting now, nutrient dense or my micronutrition is a little bit lower than what it was previously because I was eating quite a lot of fruit beforehand. But we're gonna give it a little taste test. Taste wise, be honest, it's about four out of 10. Greens powders, have I ever came across a green powder which tastes good? No, I've never. Let me have another sip because that was that's a four or five out of ten in for upper great how you say in like in for upper but i'm in the garage for upper body <laughs> is what i should have said well obviously log book my stuff as usual as i usually would do in my session give myself some sort of accountability of course i'm trying to obviously progressively overload whilst i'm at home for me and most of my clients i want to be in a good position so when i do go back to the gym i can fin kind of pick off where i left off almost i know What's that about? What is this? Sorry about that. I don't know why it started blurring. I need to stand right here because it's just going to blur. The background light isn't the greatest. But yeah, always log booking my stuff. I want to be going back into the gyms being stronger or just as strong as what I was as I previously left off. I know some movements are going to take a bit of a hit, which I haven't done for a while, but that's going to be expected. Dumbbell lateral raises before we start doing any pushing movements. So we're doing dumbbell lateral raise, flat dumbbell press, barbell OHP, some dips, seated row, pull down, Dumbbell row, cuff lateral raises, and a tricep press down and a curl to finish. So roughly about nine or 10 exercises. And we're just gonna beat lobber numbers. That's all we're simply gonna do. So I posted my progress picture on Instagram. I put it up here somewhere, my 34 week of, of gaining um, before I start my mini cut. And I compared it to my my lowest on contest prep, uh, which I'm about 30 pounds heavier now. And a lot of people, including myself, were, I looked and I think, wow, my delts have actually improved. And a lot of people were commenting that. And the main reason behind that is what I like to call the priority principle. So I've actually been prioritizing a lot of cuff lateral raises, side lateral raises, before any movements at all. And that's what you should do. If you have a weakness, if you know that you have a weakness, don't program it last. It doesn't make sense. Program it when you're fresh, you're ready to go. So definitely what I've been doing like for example now my first exercise is side lateral raises that has really came on and improved my physique so just just a bit of advice maybe you don't give a fuck who cares but it's just what my what I've done so far We're back pressing these big old fuckers. Luckily this time I've got obviously new adjustable dumbbells. It's a little bit safer than what it was previously. However, as always, I don't recommend doing this.
Now I'm going to do the 30s, but I'm going to do it unilaterally. I think I went through this in my previous video, but um, ever since I've done it, I've just connected really well with my chest, believe it or not. Bar update. As you can see, I'm not loyal. Bent as anything. Put 140 kilo, 145 kilos on here the other day to squat on. As you can see, it didn't help at all. So this uh, pec isolation movement I actually got from Steve Hall, so it's not my actual own exercise. Eight pec fly. It actually feels really, really good. I discussed in my previous video about when we're trying to hit the lats, we're trying to think about elbows down and back. But when we're trying to get some fickness in our back, so we're trying to work mid-back, rhomboids, traps area, you really want to think about scapular retraction. So I'm thinking about driving my elbows back as far as we possibly can, retracting my shoulder blades together. That's kind of the process behind getting a thicker back. But remember, lats is elbows down and back. And then when we're trying to aim for the thickness, we're trying to think full scapular retraction. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. Comment down below, paint is a paint pot, great. Thank you for watching. I hope that you wanna follow, or hope that you get something from the mini cut ser well, series or videos. I hope that you kind of can follow along and get some sort of value from it and get some un some entertainment as well. I don't fucking know. Lots of love, I hope all is safe, hope all is well. Keep smashing it if you are training at home still. If you're sitting around being a fat cunt, fucking sort it out. What are you doing? What are you doing? Sort it out. Lots of love, and <laughs> I'll see you guys in a bit.